Welcome to section 4.7, Inverses of Linear Functions. Objectives today are to find the inverses of relations and find the inverse of linear functions. Inverse relation, the set of ordered pairs obtained by exchanging the x-coordinates with the y-coordinates. So when we're talking about relations, we have a set of ordered pairs, we interchange the x's and the y's. So if 5, 3 is an ordered pair of the relation, then 3, 5 is an ordered pair of the inverse relation. So all we're doing is switching out the x and the y coordinates for each other. So if we are given a set of ordered pairs, and you'll notice this is in set notation for part A, we are going to just switch the x's and the y's around to find the inverse. So for our inverse, I'm just gonna use INV, I get the set of ordered pairs, and I'm just gonna take the point four, negative 10, and switch the X and the Y around. And now I have negative 10, four. We do the same thing with the next set of ordered pairs. We have seven, negative 19, we interchange the X and the Y, and we get negative 19, seven. Then we have negative five, 17, we reverse the pairs, and we get 17, negative five. And we do the same thing with negative three, 11, and we get the point 11, negative three. So there is my inverse relation. Those are the ordered pairs of the inverse of what we were started with. When we're given the table, we do the same thing. We are going to switch out the X and the Y's for each other. So for my inverse for part B, Again, I'm gonna use my set notation. My y is negative 13, that becomes my x-coordinate. The x-coordinate of negative four becomes the y-coordinate. And there's my inverse point. And we're gonna do the same thing with the other parts. So we have negative 85, negative one. We have 0 0.55. And we have 6.59. And this is my inverse of the table. When we're talking about relations, all we are going to be doing is switching out the X and the Y coordinates for each other. And these are our inverses. If we are given a graph and we want to find the inverse relation of a graph, and we do not have the equation, we are just going to take a few points off of our graph and then we're going to reverse the x and the y coordinates and then plot the new line that is formed. So I'm just going to pick a few points off of the first graph here. And I'm going to pick three points. So I'm going to pick 0, 1, which is right here. I'm going to pick 2, 3, which is right here. And I'm going to pick negative 3, negative 2, which is down here. And then I'm going to reverse my x and y. So my new point over here is 1, 0, which will be right here. My new point for my inverse is 3, 2, which is right here. And my new point for this one is negative 2, negative 3 which is negative two, negative three, which is right here. And then I'm going to connect them. And my line's not the greatest, but there is my inverse relation. There is my inverse graph. All right, we'll do another one of these, but all we're gonna do with these, we're gonna pick three points off of our graph, write our points down, we're gonna switch our X and Y's around and then plot the new points and then connect them with a line. So here again, I have a line that I'm going to do the inverse of, and I'm going to pick three points, and I'm gonna pick this point, this point, and this point. So we have point negative one, one, we have point two, zero, and we have point five, negative one. And we're going to reverse the ordered pairs. So we get one, negative one. We get zero, two. 
and we get negative 1, 5. We are then going to graph our points. So 1 goes to negative 1, 0 goes up to 2, and negative 1 goes up to 5. And then we connect them as best we can with a line. And we put our arrows on the ends. And that is my inverse of my original graph. All right, so that was the first two things we've done is we did points. We switched the x and y coordinates around. And the second part, we actually graphed the points to get a new line. Now we're going to do it just with equations. So inverses of linear functions. So a linear function, the equation of a line, has an inverse function that can generate ordered pairs for the inverse relation. Inverse functions are denoted as, with this notation, and this is read as f inverse of x. That negative 1 next to the function symbol means that this is an inverse function. To find the inverse function, we go through some steps. So to find the inverse function, f inverse of x, of the linear function, f of x, the first thing we do is replace f of x with y in the equation for f of x. Then we're going to do just like, we, just like we did with the points and with the graphs. We're going to interchange the y and the x coordinates. But we're going to do this in the equation. So we're going to change the y's to x's and the x's to y's in our equation. Then we're going to solve the new equation for y. And then the last thing is just to replace the y with that nth inverse notation, the function inverse notation. The reason why we use this function inverse notation is that everybody knows that this is an inverse function. Here on the top of the slide are the steps we use. So here we have f of x equals 4x minus 8. And the first thing it says is to replace f of x with y. So step 1. We are now going to have y equals 4x minus 8. Step number 2, it says interchange y and x in the equation. What that means is my y's become x's and my x's become y's. Now we have x equals 4y minus 8. Then step 3 is to solve for y. So we need to get y by itself. I'm going to add 8 to both sides. And when we add 8 to both sides, we get x plus 8 equals 4y. And we get y by itself, we have to divide by 4. So everything is divisible, is divided by 4. When we do this, I'm going to rewrite this. This cancels out. I'm going to rewrite this so my y is on the proper side. So y equals x over 4 is 1 fourth x. 8 over 4 is 2. So now we have y equals 1 quarter x plus 2. We have y by itself. We have 1 quarter x plus 2. And then the last step, it says step 4 is to replace y with the f inverse. So f inverse of x is 1 fourth x plus 2. Okay, so for the second one, give myself some room here. We are going to first change f of x to y. So y equals 1 half x plus 11. That's step number one. Step number two, switch x's to y's and y's to x's. So we have x equals 1 half y plus 11. Step three, we solve. So we subtract 11 from both sides. We get x minus 11 equals 1 half y. To get y by itself, we're going to multiply the entire equation by 2. And we get 2x minus 22 equals y. This 2 times a half is just 1. I'm going to, again, rewrite this so the y is on the left. When we do this, we can basically rotate the whole equation, and we get y equals 2x minus 22. And from here, we have one more step. It says for step 4, replace y with the f inverse notation. And this is 2x 
minus 22. There is my inverse function. This is not very complicated to do, but do the steps. Replace f of x with y for your first step. Then interchange the y's and x's in your second step. Then solve the new equation for y. And once you've done that, have y all by itself. Replace y with the f inverse notation. Here we have two more equations. It says write the inverse of the function of each equation in f inverse of x notation. One thing you'll notice here is that these start with just y equals 4x minus 12. Just the y equals, there's no function notation to start with. Uh, when we look at these, all of our linear equations that we talk about are linear functions. So in this case, step one has already been done for us. We already have y equals, so we're just going to start from this point. So we're already starting at step two. We're going to replace all of our y's with x's and all of our x's with y's. So x equals 4y minus 12. We add 12 to both sides. So this is basically already step two here. So we have x plus 12 equals 4y. And then we want to divide everything by 4. So then we have 1 fourth x plus 3 equals y. y is all by itself. This is our step 3, by the way. I'm going to rewrite this so y equals 1 fourth x plus 3. I've just rearranged it. So the y is on the left. We just rotated the whole equation. And my step 4 is to replace y with the inverse notation. And we get f inverse of x is 1 quarter x plus 3. All right. We're going to do the same thing with one on the right. We already have it in y equals, so step one was already done for us. Step two, we are going to replace the y's and the x's with each other, so x equals 1 third y plus 7. And we are going to solve for y. So we subtract 7. And we get x minus 7 is 1 third y. To get rid of our fraction with the 1 third y, we multiply the entire equation by 3. 3 times x is 3x. 3 times negative 7 is negative 21. 3 times a third is just 1. We're left with just the y. And again, I'm going to rewrite this so my y is on the left. So we're in slope intercept form. y equals 3x minus 21. This is my step 3 when I'm solving. And our last step is to replace y with f inverse of x, which is 3x minus 21. And there is my inverse equation or inverse function. That is all for section 4.7. We talked about inverse relations and inverse functions today. With inverse relations and inverse graphs, we are just switching out the x and y's for each other. So we're switching out the coordinates. The x's become the y's, the y's become the x's. When we have an equation or a function that we want to make an inverse of, we go through the four-step process to get our new equation. We use our inverse function notation. Make sure you're showing your work. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.